thank you for the opportunity to remember and to pay tribute to the courageous service of the humble Revolutionary War heroine, Margaret Corbin. Margaret Corbin at the Battle of Fort Washington. She was a camp follower, so probably at the beginning of the battle, she was just running supplies back and forth, making sure that everybody had what they needed. And then at some point in the battle, her husband, John Corbin, was killed. And instead of running off, leaving the fort, she manned his cannon with his team of cannoneers. That cannon would have been out of commission if she hadn't stepped up and done what John had done. And then she was wounded. Three grape shot hit her in the left shoulder and breast. And then uh, the British encircled the fort. And at 4 p.m., Colonel McGaw, the Patriot commander, decided that his position was untenable and he surrendered the fort. So Margaret and 2,800 other Patriot soldiers marched out of the fort and became prisoners of war. She was paroled a few days later and then eventually wound up at the Corps of Invalids here at West Point, New York. On July 6, 1779, the Continental Congress decided to give her a pension for the rest of her life. This makes her the first woman veteran of the United States of America. As far as we can tell, she passed away in 1800 and was buried in an unmarked grave. In late 1925, the state regent of New York, Mrs. Nash, decided to form a research committee for the Daughters of the American Revolution to be able to honor Margaret Corbin. The fruits of their labor were apparent when they exhumed a body in March of 1926. The West Point surgeon and the West Point dental surgeon identified the remains and reinterred those remains here in the West Point Cemetery. I first had my suspicions that this individual was not the, the remains of Margaret Corbin when I was here at West Point um, for that initial assessment. The uh, West Point Cemetery staff installing a retaining wall around the, the gravesite. Uh, equipment inadvertently struck the gravesite. They stopped the project. The executive director at the time uh, dispatched a team up here to see what had happened. What I wanted to find out was how much of the body had been disturbed by the heavy equipment. Normally, you would, you always dig vertically from the top down, but the soil is so dangerous and uh, loose. If we started to come straight down, the monument would have pitched right on top of us. So we had to tunnel in from the side. It took us about four or five days, and then Dr. Daganji took the remains up to the university. She works at Binghamton and she did her analysis over the next month and a half. In science, we can't work off of suspicions, right? You actually have to do an analysis. For adult skeletons, the, the very first thing that we always do is, is male or female. The best part of the skeleton, of course, is going to be the pelvis or the hip bones. And the reason for that is pretty obvious. Women give birth and men do not. The other thing we can look at is the skull. You can look around a room that's full of men and women and you're gonna see most of the men are gonna have a pretty heavy brow ridge, whereas the women are not, right? Most of the men are gonna have more of a square chin, whereas the women are not. And then the third area is just gonna be in taking measurements of the bones. Every single measurement was um, was clearly within the male range and, and really not anywhere near the female range. Forensic anthropology is um, a generally young field, and so I can completely understand how um, even a doctor who is supposed to know something about anatomy could look at those bones and say, yes, these are female bones. Once we learned that the remains interred in the West Point Cemetery in 1926 were not those of Margaret Corbin, everyone was committed to ensuring that Margaret Corbin's legacy and her inspiration to serve should be encapsulated in a rededication ceremony of her monument. And what a remarkable study in character Margaret Corbin is. She's not just a role model for female cadets, she is an example to all Americans of what women are capable of when put to the test. Nearly 250 years after the Battle of Fort Washington, her bravery and legacy as one of the first women to fire an artillery cannon in defense of our nation 
continues to transcend and inspire women in military service today. Since hearing of the gravesite disturbance and the forensic study last December, the Daughters of the American Revolution immediately started planning what we could do in order to effectively extend the 1926 research of the New York State Society in hopes of one day finding her burial site. That Margaret Corbin is a veteran of the United States of America. And as a veteran, she deserves the burial that she earned with her valor at the Battle of Fort Washington and by serving her country. I've been asked why we are continuing to search for Margaret Corbin. The Margaret Corbin story is important to the DAR because it epitomizes the very reason our organization was founded, to preserve the memory and the spirit of those who contributed to securing American independence.